Let's get right into it. First, couple of changes to the lock screen. Firstly, you can now add widgets. A lot like how iPhone did it, although the number of widgets you can choose from is very limited, but hopefully with time, more apps will start supporting it. Okay, second, you can now add a frame to your wallpaper and it kind of creates a mask of, you know, whatever these styles that you see and it works best when you have like a photo of a person or a pet maybe, so it kind of pops out. And then in the background, you can also give it a custom color and look, all of these masks are available and you can choose whatever shape, uh, you know, rocks your boat. Next, you can also add a custom font uh, for your date and time. So earlier you did not have the option to download fonts, but now it's there. And the last thing about the lock screen is that the wallpapers can now be given an artistic effect. So you can just swipe over and depending on the wallpaper, you'll see some options. And yes, this implementation is a lot like how iPhone did it. Now let's talk about a couple of changes to the always on display. First of all, always on display can now have a wallpaper too, just like iPhone did with their always on display. So if you go into AOD settings, you can choose to show lock screen wallpaper and that would do it. And if there's like a subject, like a person or a pet, you could also choose to erase background, which will just have you in the frame and the remaining area is just totally black. Kind of looks cool. And lastly, there's a new option for when should always on display show. And I would say auto is the best because it'll just turn off if it's in a very dark place and otherwise it's always on. Now let's talk about wallpapers for a minute. So first, there's something called as photo ambient wallpaper that depicts the weather outside on whatever photo you have set up as lock screen. It's pretty cool and to set it up, you'd first have to go into labs and turn on photo ambient wallpaper as a functionality. And then you can just go back into home screen, long press, go into wallpapers, and then under change wallpapers, you will see something called as photo ambient wallpapers. That's where you set it up. And you know, now you also get generative AI wallpapers, much like how you got in the Pixel 8 series. And again, to access that long press, go into uh, change wallpapers, and then you'll see generative right here. And you'll be able to select from amongst these nine categories, and you'll be able to create wallpapers on the fly. So let's say I choose terrain, and now I'll be able to change, okay, instead of beach, I want, let's say, mountains. And then instead of silver, let's say I go for orange. So it's gonna try and come up with surreal pictures of mountains in orange color. And yeah, there you go. It takes a bit of time. It's all uh, you know done via cloud. But yeah, I do have some pretty kick-ass options. I can do the same for volcanoes in let's say turquoise, okay? And there you go. Oh my God, that, those are amazing. So imagine these are wallpapers that you create on your device. Uh, and by the way, this does not happen on device. You do require an active internet connection to be able to do this. Next, you can customize your alarm visually. And so now you can see that when the alarm goes off, I've got a wallpaper which I can change. And then there's a time as well, and I can change the font for that. So it's pretty simple. Uh, inside the clock app, when you're in alarms, just open any alarm and at the bottom, you'll see alarm background. If you tap on it, you'll be able to customize things. First of all, you can tap on the time and you can set a specific font. And if you go into background, you'll be able to choose from these or something from your gallery. And just for comparison, this is one UI 6 and if you open an alarm, there is nothing else that you can do. Okay, next, under display, there's a new kind of color profile called adaptive color tone. It'll adjust the colors and white balance based on lighting around you to maintain a more natural and a more comfortable uh, display. Now, this is software driven, so it hopefully will come to other devices as well. Uh, and it may also have some impact on battery life, if not a lot. And talking about display, I do want to mention that they've introduced a new setting called Super HDR that lets you view your pictures in HDR in your gallery. So the gallery app will make temporary tweaks to make your photo look more dynamic in terms of shadows, highlights and colors. And by the way, it does mean that these photos and videos will look more punchy on your uh, S24 Ultra's display than it would if, let's say, you were to send it to your friend and they were to see it on their phone or if you were to post it on Instagram. Next, under battery settings in battery protection, you now have more options that help increase your battery's overall life. So in basic, if your phone is charged to 100% and still connected to a charger, it will not start charging unless your battery dips below 95%. Maximum is, you know, it reaches 100%, stops charging, and adaptive is between the two. Coming up next, with One UI 6.1, Samsung has added a new native app called Find. So if you go into the Samsung folder, you'll see something called as Find, which was not there in One UI 6. And the app has basically clubbed people you share your location with, uh, your other Samsung devices, and your smart tag devices or items in all in one app. And now coming to the camera app, there are a couple of updates there as well. First of all, single take mode can now function across multiple lenses, which was not possible earlier. 
So basically, if you're using single take now, you can use your zoom lenses and you don't have to compromise, you know, if it's something too far. Secondly, director's view has changed to dual recording, which lets you shoot from any two lenses at the same time. So it could be primary and ultra wide or primary and telephoto, or it could be front facing camera with telephoto. And so whatever two lenses you choose, those views will get recorded together. See earlier with the S23 Ultra here, you've got director's view. And in that you had to mandatorily record one from the front camera and the other one could be from any of the three lenses, but the front camera was required. And now that's not the case. Also, super slow-mo is now gone from S24 Ultra. You now get slow motion, which has a 4K 120fps frame rate uh, mode, which is great. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not too sure if this is going to be coming to previous models of the S-series phones, because, you know, it could very well be something that's dependent on the capability of the chip. And this has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, but the prior chips may not be supporting that. Now guys, these were more of the major changes. It is entirely possible that there's a whole bunch of other changes that I may not even have noticed or they're too minor. For example, there are many labeling changes like lock screen is now called lock screen and always on display, but I don't want to get into that. One thing I noticed under Bluetooth settings is there's something called as AuraCast where you could broadcast from your phone into whatever Bluetooth LE device that's connected. I haven't tried, but I'm yet to. But you know, one thing that's really important and it's kind of big in the Android world is that nearby share as a concept that's gone and it's going to be replaced by quick share. So nearby share and quick share are pretty much the same thing and going in the future, all devices, the nearby share thing is going to be just renamed to quick share now. And what's important is that it's also going to come into um, Windows. So Windows already has nearby share, but that's going to be renamed to quick share as well. It's almost like an airdrop thing, but made by Samsung for all Android devices and Windows. Good move. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. Again, there could be a lot more things that I've not talked about. I may have missed and they're still important, but if I did, and if you know about them, please let me know in the comments and that way everyone else can know. And if you guys did enjoy watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon and mark all. It really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.